Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and in Ink. And for my cards today, I pulled out the Honeybee Stamps Cosmos stamp set. I absolutely love these flowers and I love the size of them. So I decided to stamp backgrounds using these stamps onto Distress watercolor paper. And I have my watercolor paper um, lined up in my stamp platform with the smooth side facing up. And I am stamping these um, flowers with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And stamping them a couple times because they're brand new stamps. They need to be, you know, inked up a couple times, you know, seasoned a little bit. So stamp them onto the background. And then after I stamped this first cluster, the three main flowers, I just turned my watercolor paper. And then I'm just using the, the backing piece of plastic that comes with the stamp sets to protect my paper so I don't have to clean the stamps while I reposition them in another area. And when I was repositioning them, I kind of discovered that how I wanted to position them wasn't going to line up properly where I had the paper. So I just moved it because, yeah, simple, easy to do. And thankfully, I have this, <laughs> the stamps on that piece of plastic so that they aren't getting that VersaFine Onyx Black everywhere because I tend to smear this. I get it on my fingers. I get it everywhere without thinking. So protecting my little um, piece of watercolor paper here, reposition the stamps, remove the third one because there wasn't space for it, and then I'm going to stamp those remaining two. In the end, I ended up doing four backgrounds. What was originally, which it seems to be a thing with me, what was originally going to be one card turned into four. <laughs> so stamped four backgrounds with these flowers, and I just... I love, like I said, I love the size of them. They're so large and it doesn't take very long to stamp backgrounds. I kind of wish I'd stamped even more, although it wouldn't take long to do even extras because these would nice to be have just to stamp the backgrounds and then take with you with, you know, say some little Daniel Smith dot charts or some watercolor markers, whatever, and like something to work on on the go because they're just, they, they're fun for practice. Um, for my watercoloring today, I did very messy watercoloring. You could do very neat watercoloring and it, look, it would look fabulous as well. But I'm kind of loving when I really push myself to go outside the lines and just let the color sort of do its thing. So I would wet the area on the petals and outside the petals with just water first. And then I had smushed, and of course there's people with like large noisy vehicles driving by. Um, I smushed my Distress Oxide inks onto my glass mat and I would wet the petals with clean water. Then I would pick up the ink with my brush and just kind of paint it on using a little bit more water. And then to add more like darker color, I would use less water and more of the ink and just kind of paint that on. You could do the same thing with regular watercolors or regular distressing. So you just get a slightly different look. I really like the creamy look you get with the oxides, but then I also love the more transparent way to layer colors and whatnot with the regular distress inks. Again, personal preference, whatever floats your boat, and having that ability to go outside the lines and make it messy, it's kind of fun sometimes. It's a little freeing for me anyway. Um, I, I like it. And plus it also gives more color, in my opinion, to the background by doing it this way. So I, my first, set of cards I did in these like pinks, oranges, and yellows. So abandoned coral, ripe persimmon, and um, mustard seed. The mustard seed is one of the new oxide colors. I love it. It's such, it's a perfect bright yellow. I love it. It is so intense. So I painted all those. I used the new mode lawn for the stems and leaves. I made sure everything was dry before I went in and just took my brush and, you know, swirled it around in the remaining ink with um, a little bit more water and then tapped it against my fingers. I would use even an acrylic block sometimes just to get a good splatter going so I could splatter these colors all over the background. And I'm going to let these dry. The actual watercoloring doesn't take long to dry, but when I do splatters with the oxides, they take longer than you would think to dry. I've mentioned this in other videos. I have just struggles sometimes <laughs> when it comes to distress oxide splatter. Because of that pigment quality of these, it, the, the little splatters will look dry. That's a lie. They're being deceptive. Don't fall for it. Let it dry. Heat set it. Let it dry longer than you think. Because I've smeared splatters so many times it's not even funny. So with these, I did let the splatters dry probably for a good 
hour, maybe even longer. I'm not sure. I, you know, worked on all the die cutting and everything after I set these aside to dry. So they were good and dry. So after I'd done those first two, I had to stamp more backgrounds because after doing the pinks, oranges, and yellows, it just felt natural to me to do backgrounds with blues and purples and kind of an aqua color, you know, to complete the rainbow. So for the remaining two, I did um, both at the same time and I smushed um, the blues and the purples onto my uh, glass mat this time. And this one was Wilted Violet, Salty Ocean, and Peacock Feathers, which again, love and did the exact same thing. Painted, you know, outside the lines with a lighter concentration of ink, you know, a bit more water, a little less ink, and then went in with more ink, less water to add, you know, a little bit more depth and dimension to them. And then for the centers, I actually mixed a little bit of mustard seed, the yellow with the wilted violet, the purple, because when you mix yellow and purple together, um, you'll get a brown. So I mixed those together to create um, the color I wanted for all of the flower centers. And then same thing, once these were dry, I just swirled my brush in the colors with a bit of water and then create a bunch of splatter. And this is when I pulled out the acrylic block and really got the splatter going because it, I just, I love splatter. It just really helps, kind of ties it all in with the messy water coloring, plus it helps kind of fill in the background in all those areas. So after I did all of my watercoloring and my splattering, I set these aside to dry and I ran several pieces of black cardstock through my Xyron creative, sta creative Station Light to put adhesive on the back of them. I had multiple pieces of this cardstock and I did a ton of die cutting, which I totally spaced and didn't film. I didn't even realize till I was done <laughs> that I didn't have my camera on, but I coated all the backs of the cardstock with adhesive and then die cut it with the new Honeybee Thinking of You wafer die and then stacked all of those. So each one of those is three layers of black cardstock. So it's got that nice dimension. And then I backed all of that with the outline die that I die cut from vellum. So that just kind of, you know, makes it easier to adhere to the background with that nice vellum bubble around it. But it also just kind of softens it a bit so that the sentiment stands out a little bit more. And then to finish the insides of all of these cards, I'm just inking up the stamps, the Cosmo stamps with the Distress Oxide ink and stamping the same colors I used on the outside, stamping them on the inside. So for the, the pinks and yellows, I'm using the same um, mustard seed, ripe persimmon, and then the abandoned coral and stamping those on the inside. And then for the purples and blues, I used the wilted violet, salty ocean and peacock feathers and just stamping them more towards the bottom. And then once those were all stamped, I'm going to line up my card bases into my um, travel platform again so that I can line up the stamp from the Truly Great Friends stamp set. I thought that would just really finish it off. So it says, thinking of you on the outside of the card and then the inside says, a truly great friend is hard to find, difficult to leave and impossible to forget. And I love the mix of, you know, fonts and the style of this stamp. So lining it up in the stamp and the travel platform just made it easier to stamp all four card bases at once with um, the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then once all the bases are stamped, I can then adhere all those watercolor panels to the front. And I never cut these down, so they're four and a quarter by five and a half. So these will cover the complete card base. So I use my um, Tonic Deluxe adhesive for that. Just put a nice thin amount all around these um, backgrounds and then adhered those to my card bases and that, you know, liquid adhesive gave me that little bit of wiggle room just to make sure everything's lined up straight. And then to adhere the actual die cut sentiments, I use multi-medium matte adhesive because I have the finer tip applicator and I can apply it directly behind those die cut words so that the, um, you can't see the adhesive through the vellum. So just applied really thin little amounts behind the die cuts and then stuck that onto my card fronts and I actually just left that as is. No other embellishments. I think the watercolor and the splatter and just wanted the die cut to really stand out of this word. I love the size of these die cuts, love. So that finished off my cards. As always, there will be a link below the video to the blog post with um, a supply list and links to everything that was used. So you can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.